Welcome back to my Roblox beginner scripting tutorial series. My name is Braldev, and in this episode, we'll be discussing about player stats. Okay, so for most Roblox games that you've played, you've probably seen something on the, on the top right of the screen that shows a leader stat full of all the players that are playing within the game. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, let's go to test and then we're gonna hit play. So on the top right of the screen, we should see a list of all the players that are currently within this game right now. But also there are some games on Roblox that actually shows stats next to the player's name that, sh um, that can be seen by every other player that's in the game right now. So things like how long the player's been playing um, so things like how long the player's been playing the game for, or other things like the currency that they have, like whether it's coins or gems or whatever it is, you can see it next to each player that's within the game. And this is what's called player stats, which is something we're gonna be implementing inside of Roblox Studio. And I think this is something all beginners should know how to implement, because it's also a very useful feature to know how to implement as well. So that's what we're about to be doing. Now, before we get into implementing, there's a few things we need to know about first before we do that. So I'm just gonna hit stop. And the first thing we need to understand is creating instances within a script. Now, just to recap, an instance is basically any object that's contained within the game. So it doesn't matter if it's in workspace or inside of service script service or service storage, it doesn't really matter. An instance is literally just any object that's inside of the game. So it can be this script or it could even be this script or even this script. It can be the spawn location, it could be this model, it could basically just be anything. So we're creating instances and we're putting them inside of the game and the way we've been doing them is by hitting the plus sign next to wherever we wanted to create an instance and then we just search up whatever instance type we want to insert into the game but what if i told you we can actually create instances within a script so that we can create stuff while the game is running because if we were to do it like this then we can only create instances before the game actually runs but if we do it inside of a script we can create instances while the game's running. So I'm gonna be showing you how this works inside of Studio really quickly. So I'm just gonna create a script inside of Workspace by hitting the plus sign, inserting a script just like this. I'm going to rename this to um, player stats like that. And I'm also going to disable the random scripts that we created in the last episode. I'm just gonna delete this. And so the way we create an instance, let's say we wanted to create a part. We're going to first create a variable by saying local new, part equals and the way we do this is we use what's called instance uh, so we have an uppercase i and then we say instance dot new so this is the constructor we're going to be using to create a new part instance so we're going to put open and close parentheses and then inside of here it takes in a string which is basically the class name that we want to add to the game which is going to be a part like this. So as you can see, we can create a lot of instances, but what we want to create is a part in this case. So we've now created a new part inside of the script, but right now it's not located anywhere because we didn't specify a location for this new part. So what we have to do is drop a line and we have to say new part dot parent. So parent is basically where do we want this part to be a children of, or which folder do we want to put this new part in? In this case, we can put it inside the workspace folder by saying um, new part parent equals game dot workspace, just like this. Now, there are some other things we can do with this uh, before we set the parent of this thing. So we can add some more configurations like changing the name of the new part by saying new part dot name equals in quotations. We're probably just going to say new instance part like this. And so now what we should see is if we go into the game, hit test and hit play, then we should see the new instance being created and be put inside of the workspace folder. So if we scroll down, then we can see the new instance part is here, but it's kind of located down here. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna like move this up a little bit, um, but here we go. This is how we create new instances within our game using a script. It doesn't resort to just using a, a part, but we can create anything we want inside of a script. Now, the second piece of information we need to know is using instanced data types. Now, basically what I'm referring to is if we go to our script and recap what a data type is, it's basically different types of data, as the name suggests, that we can use inside of our scripts, but also in the game in general. 
So we have things like strings that basically just make up a bunch of characters. Then we have numbers. And then we also have Booleans like true and false and all these sorts of things. We can basically take these data types and use them as if they were instances within the game itself. So here's what I'm referring to. If we go into the game and we click on the plus sign in workspace, we can search up whatever data type we want. So we can say, let's say a uh, string and it's going to say a string value we can insert inside the workspace. So if I click that, then it can show down here if we select it that there is a value property inside of this string value. So we can change this to whatever string we want by saying, I don't know, hello world or something. And this is the value of the string. Now we can do other things like insert a number value like this. So this is a number value that takes in a number for the value instead of a string. So this one can be, I don't know, 100. And then we can do the same thing with a Boolean. So if we say bool value like this, then this takes in a check mark for the value. So it's either true or false, just like that. And you basically get the idea. So these are in an instance format, so it's not restricted to just having them be used inside of a script. And this is gonna be important to know when we're going to be adding leader stats inside of the game. So now that we understand that, there's one more thing we need to understand, and that is the players folder. So if we hit play, then we've mostly just been working with the workspace folder inside of this tutorial guide. But now I want to introduce to you the players folder, which basically shows all the player objects that are currently within the game. So as you know, there's me that's in the game right now. And if we open up our player, there's four things here that's actually very important to know about. The first one being backpack, which is basically any item we have here in the hotbar. Then we have starter gear, which I'm not gonna worry too much about right now. Player GUI and then player scripts. So we have all of these things. And in order for us to add leader stats to our player, we need to add them inside of our player in the player's folder. The difference here is that this is our player object, but if we go into the workspace, this is our player character. So this is our player character, which is inside the workspace, and this is our player object inside of the player's folder. So now let's hit stop. So we now know everything we need to make player stats. So what we're going to do now is go back to our script. I'm going to select everything and then delete it. So what we want to do is basically create a leader stats folder for every single player that joins into the game. And the way we're going to do that is by first writing a player added event by saying, game dot players dot player added colon connect function open and close parentheses and we're going to pass in a player argument and then we're going to hit enter just like this and what we need to do first is create a leader stats folder inside of each player so that whatever value we put inside of here is going to show up on the right side of the screen so what we're going to do is add a folder called leader stats so we're going so what we're going to do is say local leader stats equals instance dot new open and close parentheses and what we're going to put inside of here is a folder so this is the new instance we're going to create and then what we're going to do is rename this folder that we just created so we're going to say leader stats dot name equals now this is going to be very important we have to make sure that the name of this leader stats is exactly leader stats in all lowercase just like this otherwise roblox won't know that this is the leader stats folder that's going to be added to the player next thing we're going to do is change the parent of the leader stats folder to be inside of the player so we're going to say leader stats dot parent equals player just like this so if we go into the game and hit play what should happen is we look at our player and once we open this up, we can see that there's now a new leader stats folder instance that was put inside of our player. So now what we can do is put any data type instance inside of this folder and it'll show up right here on the top right of the screen. So I'm gonna hit stop and then we're gonna go back to our script. And for the first example, let's create a coins value. So what we're going to do is say local coins equals instance dot new open and close parentheses now you have to look for the right value that we're trying to add here which is going to be an int value in this case so int value is basically just whole numbers that we're going to be using so this is how we create it and now what we're going to do is set the name of the coins so we're going to say coins dot name equals coins just like this and then we're also going to set a default value of it as well so we're going to say coins dot value equals zero now we're saying coins dot value because if we were to look at our number value that we created here we're trying to set the value property we're not trying to set the instance itself 
So once we do that, let's now set the parent of coins. So we're gonna say coins.parent. We're gonna put this inside of the leader stats folder, just like so. So we're going to say leader stats like that. And now if we go into the game and hit play, then what we should see is our coins leader stat inside of the leaderboard. So if we go into players, go to our player, go to the leader stats folder, we can see that we now have our coins in value. And if we were to change this value right here, so if we were to select this and then change it to, let's say 10, then we can see that it's changing right here on the top right of the screen. Now, I don't encourage you to change it directly like this just for like server and client reasons, but we're going to be learning about that in my advanced scripting tutorial guide. So you don't really have to worry about that right now. But this is essentially how you add leader stats inside of your Roblox game. So I'm going to hit stop. And what we can do here is let's say we wanted to have a loop that basically increments the value every single second. So our coins go up by one every single second. What we can do is drop a line or drop two lines down here and have a while true do statement by saying while true do, and then we're gonna hit enter. Make sure that we have a task dot wait for any amount of time, it can be like one second, just so that this doesn't infinitely run and then crash our script. And now what we're going to do is increment the coins value. So what we're gonna do is say coins.value equals coins.value plus one, just like this. Now you have to make sure that it's coins.value and it's not the coins instance itself. The reason we do coins.value is because we're trying to set the value property to whatever it is that it's going to be, not the coins instance itself. Because if we were to do the coins instance itself, like let's say if we got rid of the value right over here and we started hitting play, then it's going to say that it's trying to perform arithmetic add on instance and number because we need to add the value, which is a number, not the coins instance. So I'm gonna hit control Z twice so that we can have the coins value again. And now let's hit play and see what happens. So as you can see, after every single second, the coins value is being incremented by one every single time. And that's basically what we wanted to do with the script. So that is basically how you use player stats inside of your game. For today's learning objective, what I want you to do is you can create more instances if you want by either creating a Boolean value or by creating a number value or even a string value as well uh, and add them to the leader stats folder. And once you do this, I want you to go down to the comment section and paste in your code so that other developers can see what you've been doing that you feel comfortable sharing. So that's basically going to be it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one. Take care.